Yes, people, we're back at Big Steve MCFC. Feel like we've not spoke about any domestic football for a while. Um, there's no rest for the wicked. We're straight in off the World Cup, straight into the big dog game. Manchester City v Liverpool feels a little bit strange. Got my main man, Big Six brother Grizz Khan here, as always, to rep Liverpool. What we saying, mate? We're saying exactly the same to you as what you just said, man. The big games just keep rolling. Just when we think, yeah, football, World Cup, all of the madness of that, we need a little bit of a break. Nah, mate. No break, as you said. No break whatsoever. You've got the war hat on as well, man. You've got the war well, hat on. I always get a bit scared when the war hat comes out. It's that time of year when it gets serious. We've been fucking about for the first four <laughs> months, right? <laughs> Fanning about losing to every Tom Dick and Harry, right? And now... We've got, we need to get serious. So, yeah, when you get serious, you've got to bring the war hat. And even though it's the Carabao Cup, and, you know, I don't mean you have a giggle about it, neither team will want to give an inch, whether it's the reserves, the kids, no, the squad members, the, 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 the returning players, nobody, and especially the two coaches. N neither of them like losing a game of fucking tiddlywinks, never mind football. So it's, it's a weird, it's a weird one though because obviously we've just seen the World Cup. We, we'll touch on that in a minute. We, we we just seen what went on there. Brilliant spectacle. Qatar hats off to Qatar for hosting a fantastic tournament. Just shows you what when alcohol levels are uh, removed, things run a bit smoother than elsewhere. Uh, no police, riot police, buttons, cannon, water cannons, throwing chairs, none of that. Mate, it was mate, just, only just two. Tournament. Mate, someone sent me something. Only two, there was only two police reports filed in the whole of the World Cup. Mad. Two. Mad. Two police reports. I don't know what to say, mate. That's, that's a self-explanatory. If you take, look, me, right? And of course you're the same. We all are. Every human is the same. If you want to take your family and kids anywhere, you don't give a shit about anything else above their safety. You want to make sure they're yeah. safe. And over there, I know about 100 people that have gone. About 100 people, no joke. And they've said, from all walks of life, every race, yeah. every colour, every level of society, I've got, I've, got your, I've got your road men to your fucking lawyers, right? Gone out there, right? And they're loving it. They're absolutely yeah. loving it. Because they can get their drink. They go, we can get our drink. Just not around the football stadium, around the football. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, we yeah, want to, yeah. yeah, so we can go and party, but not when it's right, you know, and that's what we want. We want perfect. We want to enjoy. We want to remember what we saw. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I mean? We want to, and we want to be ready for the next game because there was games every day, weren't it? Like, it all seemed like it, like three games, three games yeah. a day and all that kind of business. Well, so, you want to enjoy it. You, when you get older, you want to enjoy the spectacle. I mean, look, I, I, I'll tell you the truth. In my youth, um, the amount of Man City games I attended, but the, the ones I actually remember. Blur. Um, <laughs> I, 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 next week, I'm three years sober. So three years sober by my own choice. Um, I've never enjoyed football so much. I've never enjoyed life so much. I'm just, um, yeah, i just taking it all in and that. But my, my friend was over there and he said the same. He said, you can get a beer if you want at night time, but... Near the stadiums, it's locked down, it's shut down. Everyone's on the same level. Everyone's having a party and that. And listen, I think there's a few countries can learn a lesson from it. I think I think there is. I think there's a few countries can learn a lesson. It might not be to everyone's cup of tea. People might see their ass and say, no, we want to get a beer. That's your choice. But the facts don't lie. The facts don't lie. Two police don't lie. Compared to, I was, I was hearing 700 or something last time out or wherever, blah, blah. And we saw the streets of, well, I saw the streets of London. Uh, after yep. a match, you know, what I mean, right, as you said, riot police and yeah, mate, fucking, oh, it was disgusting. Poor people having to clear that shit up after after every game of football. This one has been an absolute festival. That's the best way of calling it, I think. And the football's not been bad, has it, Steve? Let's no, it's be been honest. I've enjoyed it. It's just, been... it's just, it's affected the domestic season so much because yeah. I'm an old school guy. I love the Christmas period when you're home away, Boxing Day. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, whatever it is, thick and fast. You know, I like all that. It has thrown a spanner in it, but do you know what? It was worth it to see to see that final on, on, on Sunday and, and the way that went. Mbappe, Messi, you know, it was just madness. And and, and I think I think we'll take it on the chin this time. Um, but yeah, it, coming back now, 
straight into Liverpool City. It just feels a bit weird because Liverpool yeah. City, whether it's a Carabao Cup or whatever, even the Charity Shield, the rivalry starts to build the week before. You're starting to think about it. I've not really thought about it until today. I'll, I'll so, be honest. I'm looking now thinking, right, who have we got available? Are Liverpool going to have them available? And do you know what? It's a Carabao Cup. We've said it before. People take the mick out of City for winning it so many times. But I said to you when you went and you won it, the feeling when you win it at Wembley, the day out at Wembley with your mates and your family and everyone singing on the pitch and all, you look at the players, they don't treat it like a second-rate competition. It's, 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 it's a trophy. Mate, simple as. We always bust joke, me and you, about it. And the fact, right, of the matter is you have to win trophies. So, like, my, my banter to you always is about, oh, history, heritage, right? Mm. And then... And then you come back at me and say, well, when was the last time you won all those trophies? And it's true. You have to start off, if you want to build a legacy for your fucking club <laughs> or anything, you have to start winning everything that comes in your way. Yeah. Everything that comes in your way. If it's a charity shield, you win that. If it's a league cup, you win that. FA cup, you put that away. Then you get onto the leagues. Then you get into the Champions League. But you've got to build your history. And that's what you've got to do. Your legacy, I mean. Course you've got to do, but you know, and that's what we used to do, and that's what you're doing now. You've won, you own this Carabao Cup. Do you know what I mean? It's like literally it's been yours for the last five, six years. And we both know whoever wins on a Thursday, isn't it now? Yeah, yeah. We, we know whoever wins Thursday automatically will become clear favorites. Yeah, that's the 100%. way it is with us. That's the way it is. whoever wins automatically, and then we may start taking it even more serious in terms of team selection. Of course, it feels weird because. Look at the state of our squads right now. Like, how, how is it going to work? Like, it could be anything. It could be anyone. But that's what adds to the fun a bit as well, if you know what I mean. We can relax a little bit rather than... How many times have me and you spoken about games where we can't breathe? No, <laughs> we, that's what I mean, we, yeah. It's not, it's not nice, man. I'm not joking. It's not it nice feeling. Feel, it doesn't feel that intense, let, let yeah. me tell you. We it doesn't feel back. that intense. It will be Thursday when we get there. You, the, the Liverpool got a full top tier of the South Stand, which... I don't think we've ever done that before. Uh, we always cram me down one corner. They've given the full top tier, so there's going to be plenty of noise. Um, and then we played Girona at weekend in a friendly. Uh, yeah. A lot of youth team players there. Haaland, Mares, De Bruyne, Gundogan, all got minutes. I'm hoping some of the England lads, i seen John Stones at weekend when I was out. He's back. I hope some of the England boys, maybe Calvin Phillips, yeah. Uh, didn't really play well for England. Uh, didn't play at all, really, for England. Maybe he's fresh, wants to get back. I don't know if Laporte and Rodri are back yet. I think Nathan Aki's away because the Dutch got far. I think, uh, obviously, Alvarez is in Buenos Aires, partying like mad. Fair play to him. I'm but, surprised you're not there with him. Fuck's sake, man. I, I, I can imagine you've been, <laughs> you've been flying mate, out. It, <laughs> can it you imagine? Just, oh, the scenes in the scenes in Argentina were crazy, man. Ooh. It was that, that drone footage that went over that that in Buenos Aires there. Unbelievable. I mean, I'm a big, massive Diego Maradona fan. I have been all my life. And yeah. I've got things in my house, shrines to him, candles to him from Naples, everything. And for me, you know, I've got a soft spot for Argentina through Diego. But Messi, I just I just think the stars aligned and it all, it all just went their way. And it is what it is. But I think watching Kylian Mbappe's performance as well, he's the next generation now. You know, scary, he's going to be big. He's scary. Big. He's scary. He's four, <laughs> he's four goals behind already. The all-time World Cup goal scorer. He's four goals behind, Steve. He's only a kid. Like, yeah, if everything goes to plan, like, unless he's, like, you know, we'd, hopefully he stays injury clear and all that as a long career, like a normal career, he will smash that record of smithereens. Yeah. He is. 100%. And it's, it's you know, it's fitting for Messi to do that. The Qatar hats off to them. But we've got to get down to the big dog business now. We're back to the Premier League. We're back to the Carabao. So, from a Liverpool point of view, um, I know you've got quite a few promising youngsters that that played in the last round. Um, is there going to be a mix of, of youngsters in this lot or do you think you're going to have enough back to put in a semi-decent side? Yeah, I think we're going to put a semi-decent side, Steve. I'm not going to, I'm not going to muck around. I think we are, only because of the fact that, like, like a lot of them didn't go to the World Cup, and the one because the only yeah. one that's away, like Ake is away. You said for for the Dutch, same as Van Dijk, so he's nowhere near it. Um, and like like you said, Phillips Trent didn't play much, 
at all. So Trent's back with the squad Monday training. So I think he'll come in. I think we've have, I think we'll have a decent team, Steve. And I think we'll have a obviously we'll have a couple of sprinklings of the keep uh, of, of new kids, including the keep the reserve keeper will come in. But I think the fact that it's you lot, yeah. I just don't think our managers will want to lose against each other. I think just like same like you, I think you're gonna have a much stronger team than you think. And when I mean stronger, you know what I mean like look at the players that you mentioned, Maris, Gundogan, Kevin De Bruyne. And um, um, and Haaland, all right. Take them four, add Phillips, that's five. That's yeah. pretty much well, that is half the team. Um, Cole Palmer that, probably play Cole Palmer, Cole Palmer. Um, Sergio Gomez, the kid they got from Anderlecht, Rico Lewis. Yeah. It's if only not, if not, if not Cancelo, if not Cancelo back because he they got dumped quite early, yeah. He's been, well, but if he's back, then Bernardo could be back and Diaz could be back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what had to, because our, our our lads were given one week off as soon as yeah, they got knocked out. Did the pet do the yeah. same? Yeah. So then it could be anything. Because I'll tell you what, our, our lads started training, as I said, everyone bar Hendo and Van Dyke come back to training. And it's not like they've been sat on their ass out there. They've been training every day, so they, they are fit. You know what I mean? This can go straight in, to be honest. I just got a feeling... I, I, I got, no, I got a feeling it's going to be much stronger than we think. I, I, yeah. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be seven, seven, eight big hitters on both sides. I genuinely believe that. And then a so. couple of, and then a couple of kids. Yeah. Is there any? Is there any mm. Liverpool kids we should be looking out for? And obviously we know Harvey Elliott, but he's been around for a while. Is there anyone who? who you, what about the kid from Aberdeen, the fullback that that you signed? Is he anywhere near it? He's been he's been unfortunate. I rate this kid really, really. There's only two kids worth speaking about in in my eyes, apart from the Elliot. Um, I've got a bit of a, I've got a bit of a bone to like. I I got a bit of slaughter, slaughtering done to, at me because I said something about our kids. You know what it's like. You can't say nothing about your club. You have to be no. always super positive, whatever. <laughs> anyway, but I said something the other day. I said, look, I said I don't see many of these kids because well I think it was when we got beat by Leon in the the friendly hour in Dubai or whatever. And I yeah. said I don't see many of these kids having a good Liverpool career. And I didn't yeah. say normal football career because they're all good players. They're all good kids. They'll have good careers at Birmingham or Aston Villa or whatever. Right. I just said I can't see them having a good Liverpool career. Apart from Elliot Cavalio, right? Doak. I'm going to come on to him if you want to know about him. Ben Doak and Calvin Ramsey. And everyone went, whoa. And I said, that's my opinion, people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And if if we get four of them coming through, that's mad success. Like, what? Yeah, calm, course, down, yeah. calm down. Like, think about what I'm saying. Like, that's, that's, that's four. That's mad success. How many others do you see? Foden is the outlier. Everyone talking about Foden. Saka at Arsenal. I'm trying to think at the top, top, top level. Have Man United had got someone coming through that Ganacho kid? Like you only yeah. get you only get one or two coming through, and that's that's fine. That's how it we've works, right, Steve? We've sold our, we've refreshed our, sold our. Oh, you said them, yeah. And then and and they'll go on. Make money. Me, Romeo Lavia, Chelsea wanted him. Romeo Lavia, we yeah. just wasn't right for us at the time, but it is what it is. But like you say, um, the I watched City Girona at weekend. And there's a young kid plays for us called Carlos Borges. He's Portuguese winger, scoring fours, fives, hat tricks against Man United, all that. And everyone's crying for him to get in the first team. In my opinion, he's off the first team. He's off the pace a little bit. I watched him, and he's great going forward with the ball. But Girona got more success down his side when he came on because they knew. And I struggled a little bit defensively. Now there's talk of him not signing a contract, wanting to leave, probably going down the Jade and Sancho route. That's fine. But what we got to look at, all these academy games, that, that under-23 academy is not a great standard. Pep says that. We're, we're beating teams 14-0. Yep. Right? So when you're seeing a player score five, six goals, it's not the true story because you put them in against, like you say, Girona, who's a Spanish team, they look bang average. So the level between academy <laughs> level and first team level is so high They've got to be on point. So I get what you're saying there. But tell us about Doak. Yeah, look. I mean, I, I, look, as I said, Calvin Ramsey, 
he's he's been a bit unlucky, Steve. So I don't think he's going to start. I I think he would have been nailed on to start, but they came back to Dubai and he had a bit of a back issue because he's a because he's quite tall for a fullback. I think he's five ten, five eleven already, and he's only a kid, so he's got that growing pains um, type thing. Um, I'm going back to my childhood. I'm smiling at myself. You know, I, I do these ones, but I'm weird like that. You know, you know, I'm weird like that. I start thinking about, there used to be a program. I don't know if you remember. Do you remember Growing Pains of Adrian Mole? Adrian Mole, yeah. Do you remember yeah. Adrian Mole? <laughs> so I used to think, I used to watch that. Anyway, I don't know why I fucking thought about that. But yeah, um, yeah, Kevin Rams is a good player. I really rate this kid. He's a footballing player. He's one of those players that could easily fit into somewhere like you lot. Like he's a, he's a Cancelo, Trent type of fullback. He's all about yeah. on the ball, flair. So he's going to come a long way. We've got this Ben Doak kid. He's the only one I'm really excited about. Everyone talks about every club's kids and everyone bigs them up. But this is the one that I'm kind of convinced already. The only one, really, to be honest with you, I think he's going to go all the way. He's 16 years old, born from Celtic. A um, lot of clubs were in for him. We've got a good relationship with him. Um, with Kenny and that as well. Yeah, he's a gem. He's a gem. And all great Liverpool teams have got, have had a Scottish player in them. So as yeah. Robertson's coming to the end of his career, right? Another, what, three years, four years, whatever. This kid's going to come onto the scene. I'm so convinced it's unbelievable. Tricky little winger, powerful pace. I compared him to uh, Overmars stylistically, if you want to know like what kind of player he is. Yeah, like you said, even though he's smashing up the under 21s and he's even made his Scotland day before under 21, even though he's only he's only just turned 17 a couple of weeks back. He's not ready for a game like Man City. But but I think by next year he'll be on the subs bench. Starting, I reckon he'll start League Cup games and be on the bench for a five, 10 minute cameo. When if we're ever two, three nil up, he's one of those kids. But yeah, I love him. I love him. You can't tell what footed he is. I like that about players. Yeah, you, you honestly can't tell. He's very strong. He's only a wee little kid. He's from Scotland, isn't it? So he's only a wee little kid, but he's fantastic. Ben Doak, that's definitely one to uh, look out for. Apart from that, I can't see us throwing in any other. I think Fabinho. A lot of people are playing. We might play Stefan Bejatic, who's um, who's um, been playing for us. Another young kid, eighteen years old, plays as a DM, thinking man's player. Not very physical and big and all that. That's what's lacking for him but he's like a thinking man reads the game really well if he plays I don't know I think I think you'll have a field day in there to be honest with you I don't rate him like a lot of Liverpool fans rate him I've got a feeling Fabinho might start because he didn't play a game for Brazil and uh, yeah, and they yeah. got like that fellow you know what I mean so uh, yeah it's difficult to tell but I, I could probably very confidently predict nine nine players I reckon in my opinion that will definitely start but yeah they're the only two kids worth thinking about from your side yeah well we've got obviously we've got Rico Lewis a young kid Manchester oh. full back he's he's, he's he's scored in the Champions League oh, he um, plays left back don't he right back oh he plays right back sorry and then Gomez right will be yeah. left back yeah, yeah, yeah. Gomez will be left back to be honest Rico oh. Lewis is he to be honest I've become I spoke to him a few times he's a good lad I was supposed to see him last week but City went on a hospital visit so I didn't quite catch him Manchester lad Really humble, down to earth. Um, got a little bit of something about him. So, a lot of City fans are confident if he plays now because, you know, we've seen him, you know, do well pre-season. He's, he's coming for these games. He's scored in the Champions League. So, we're confident with him. Gomez is a little uh, bit different because he came from Anderlecht. He can play all over the park. He's been playing at left back. A lot of City fans are panicking. He looks a bit shaky in that. Does he look like a Man City first team player who could start week in, week out. No, to me, he doesn't. But he's learning. You, you know what it's like coming to City as a fullback. It's it's like it's like a, an exam. You've got to play inverted. You've got to play outverted. You've got to play backwards. You've got to play front. It's mad. So he needs a bit of time. These are the games for me where I've got no problem in, in, in Sergio Gomez playing. Get up against Liverpool in, 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 in the League Cup. It's not as high stakes as it would be at Anfield or the Etihad yeah. in the League game. Um, but it's a centre back issue. We played Girona weekend. We had two young kids there, Katonga and Charles. Never come near a first team game. Um, but I seen Stones in Manchester. Whether Stones wants to keep going, 
but he did take a knock for the England game and came off. Uh, whether Rodri and Laporte are back for the Spanish lads, whether they're back. Um, like you said, Calvin Phillips. Um, we've got De Bruyne. Gundogan's going to play. Riyad's going to play. Haaland's going to play. Um, Cole Palmer may play out wide as well. Um, so we've got a few options, like you say. I think today, when we see who's been training and start to see pictures of players moving about yeah. the club, I think we'll get a better idea. The managers ain't going to tell us shit because they're going to want to keep it under cloak and dagger, in it? Yeah. Now, I think, I think, I think, I think, just guessing again, a lot of them going to want to play. And it's all about, because when do you play a game? Is it Sunday in the league? We play Leeds on the 28th. Oh, you've got a little gap. Yeah. We're supposed to play Leeds on Boxing Day and it got changed to the 28th. So I don't know if it's TV or what, but. Oh, shit. So you're going to have a, because we play a game on, um, on Sunday. Um, so we're going to, obviously, our, our lineup's going to be a bit different. So if you're not playing until the 28th, then I've got a feeling, which is what, next Wednesday, I think you're going to be far stronger than you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you've got a whole week of rest. We play again in about three days, four days. So we've got a, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to have to hold back a few, even though they may want to play. So yeah, it'll be interesting, man, look. As you said, full quarter of tickets been given to us, and we're going to pack it out. We we pack out all way grounds, um, just like you guys do. Um, the travelling support is going to, and the atmosphere is going to be good. It's going to be good because of the name of the clubs. Because of the clubs, as I said, well, the rivalry between the two clubs. Has even been... if it was an under twenty one game, it would be it would be yeah. it would be a challenge. You know what I mean? Did so, you see, and no one's... Just, mm. just touching on something quick while we're talking about the rivalry. Did you see the statement they've put out today? The joint statement from both clubs about the support. Yeah, yeah. And look, I mean, people people going to laugh about it, right? And people can say what they want, but that's how you deal with it. Yeah, we're not going to yeah, take no Listen, it, it's, it's... As a person that's been on there and seen it, both sides, I've seen... Obviously, we had the chariot... Was, no, we had the FA Cup game when all the young idiots were singing and that and, and, and mad the minute silence and things like that. There's, there's no doubt the last few games we've played against each other, it's getting worse. Stems from the coach smashing incident and all that. And listen, people might not want, want to talk about it, but it's getting worse. So fair play to City and fair play to Liverpool putting the statement out and doing it. Um, but they've got to come down hard on the people that get caught. They can't keep... It. Statements mean nothing in football. You can... You can... You're always going to get... You could get 40,000 Liverpool fans in a stadium and one dickhead could start singing a song and then it tarnishes the whole of everybody else. That's always been the case in football. But they're trying to get people to out them out, whether people will or don't know. But we just want these games to be enjoyed for the football, not who can point score about singing chants about different tragedies and shit. It's just a I nightmare. Think, isn't it? I think it's the best way to deal with it. I think, of course, it's going to get worse. Well, not of course, but it's natural to get worse and worse as the rivalry intensifies more and more. Your manager's signed a new deal. Our manager signed a new deal. We're yeah. going to go again. Do you know what I mean? They're total different types of managers. They're both passionate. Like people talk about Klopp's passion. You know as well as I do, Pep's a passionate bloke on it. Yeah, he goes mad yeah. as well. They both go mad. Do you know what I mean? And then they rile up their fan bases, right? But then they've done the smart thing and said, look, you know what I mean? Let's concentrate on the football because, my God, the football takes over. Once, once our two teams play football, then, do you know what I mean? Usually... Usually, 90% of the time, it's the talking point. The football is the talking point. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Last couple of times, a few idiots. But you can't control every single knobhead. You can't. It's impossible no, you to can't. do. But you yeah. try your best. And now that it's out there, I genuinely think, now that it's, everyone's eyes are on the knobhead, so to speak, I think there'll be less of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they know Liverpool have had this out. for years. The, the, the Liverpool have had to deal with this for years. Same as Man United got dealt with it for their the Munich thing and that over years. Rival teams and when they've not got a lot really to say, uh, or they're getting hammered, they, they just resort to that. It's just a natural thing that football fans who are pissed up do. But like you say, we don't want it overshadowing the games. The Man City Liverpool games over the last few years have been absolutely epic, man. Proper games of football, proper end-to-end -end intense games. Like this one at Anfield this year in the league. It was a great game of football. It was one, <laughs> one, one chance, one goal. <laughs> Sealed the game. That was it. It's like, you know, you, 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 come out the get, you come out the ground talking about the game, not about what's gone on in it. But 
I think I think it'll be different on Thursday night. I think you know Carabao are put. I think we can just get behind the teams. I think everyone's glad that the the the, the, the domestic football is back going into the Christmas period. But I can see it being a, a really tough game. I can I can never call it. I don't like to call the Liverpool games because I just don't think we do well against Liverpool. I yeah, I look I, look. I, I, I've got no... I'm like you when you come to Anfield. I can't see us winning there. I'm going to be honest and real, right? It's, it's a, You know, you guys, you know, are going to be fully pumped up for it regardless of what it is, as I said. But I think it's going to be very, very relaxed and exciting. I think it's going to be a good festival. I think it's going to continue from the World Cup, you know, Steve. I think I'm, it's glad it's not a league game. I'm glad it's not a league game. I wouldn't like to come back into the league game like that. I would have hated it. I would have no. absolutely hated it. I mean, we we we've started okay, and we're, we're there or thereabouts. You you you're well off it at the minute. You've got to get one of them runs together and get everybody back going because, <coughs> mate, know, if we did not win, if we did not win our last, we're on a little bit of a run. We've won our last four before the break, and that's why I'm like you. The break, I was crying out for a break, but then I wasn't. Because once we won our first last four, I was thinking, oh shit, we're on a bit of a run now. Now we've got to start again, again. And it's come, and, and you know, it's the worst possible game in football. Away to Man City is the hardest game in world football. Like, let's not beat around the bush. So, but the fact that it's not a league game, I don't want to sound like a loser, but it won't be the end of the world because Villa no. away is the next, the main target for us. Like, as well, you we said, went to the World Cup on the back of a defeat to Brentford. Oh, yeah. Fucking hell, So, yeah. we got last minute, you know, defeat to them. So, we went out there like, oh, if we'd have gone there with two points behind Arsenal, I'd have been chilling, thinking, you know what, we're on the coattails, but we're five behind them now. We lost to Brentford. We've not been ticking along. Um, City's not been playing too well, to be honest. The, the change of, um, with Haaland up front and all that, Haaland's at the ground running, don't get me wrong, but, you know, the team itself doesn't look as fluid as it has over the last few years, but hopefully... We can kick into gear and kick it on, but I am excited for the game. I'll be honest. I'm just like I say. I'm I'm, I'm literally just lucky dip team. I ain't got a clue who's going to play, who's not playing, yeah. who's back, who's not. I can't see out. I've been trolling through the the training videos today, see if I could see any anyone who who shot me. Couldn't see anyone. Um, but yeah, mate. I just think have they trained today? Have they have they released pictures from today's? Now I think today's going to be key, right? Is there a press yeah. press conference for the players, coaches? I think Managers haven't it might done a be press tomorrow conference. the press conference, isn't it? Is it what yeah. day is it today? Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, it might be tomorrow. It'll be tomorrow. But it's yeah. you know, it's listen, it is it is what it is. But while you're on here, I've got you on here. I want to talk about your mate Jude Bellingham. Oh. Oh. Because we've we've had this convo in private. Um I've got a feeling City's in the race. You've you have more or less convinced he's a Liverpool player. You even told me his number. <laughs> so for the people out there, Chris Khan, I've got him on the spot now. You know, are you putting your are you putting the war hat on the line? Yeah, on yeah, yeah. No, nah, I'm not going I'm not no 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 don't take the piss now. I'm not putting this on the line. Fuck that. Um <laughs> I'm not I'm not going all the way. Look, um convinced in my in my own head, right? That would be the best way of doing it, right? Which is I think if Liverpool pull that signing off after the A, the start of the season you've had, B, the squad, looking at your squad now where it needs a bit of attention, if you pull that off, that is a massive um, shot round world football for me, if you get him. I was um, met Kieran Dyer. Do you remember Kieran Dyer? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Newcastle yeah. and a proper top lad. i uh, done a show with him on, on 90 Minutes and afterwards he goes... In, during the show, he realised I'm a Liverpool fan. First of all, he was bigging up Liverpool. He was like, oh, I would be playing Trent if I was the England coach. And Steven Gerrard was the best I ever played against. We were asking him questions from all our different clubs. Anyway, afterwards, he was like, then he started, it was all nice. And off screen, he went, what's happened to your team? He started taking a piss, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I went, oh, Kieran, fucking, don't do that to me. And he's like, <laughs> no, nah, you're, he's like, you lot are fucking falling off a cliff and I'm taking a piss. I said, listen, Jude's going to fix all that. And he started laughing like you. So you know like how all you lads start laughing at me? He's like, you what? I went, Jude's going to fix it all. You know me, I was tongue in cheek. I was like, yeah, Jude's going to fix it all. And he goes, Jude Bellingham, you think he's going to Liverpool? I said, why not? He started laughing. 
I thought, wow, man, everyone's laughing. So you're right, I get it. Because I, I said, why not? Why not? He goes, well, he's going to have City and Madrid after him. Now, I've told you as well, I don't think Madrid are in it at all. I think it's, no. I, I'm, I'm convinced it's us or you, right? I'm convinced it's us or you. And I get it why he would choose you guys over us. Like, you are the best club in 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 in. in, in in, in Britain, by far, by far, you're the most lucrative, the, the best coach, along with ours. You know, the up and coming, everything about you says. And and this is a crucial thing that I'm a little bit scared of. You could do with a younger set of legs in there, and he might that yeah. might appeal to him because Gundogan and Silver, right? Yeah, and even KDB to a certain extent. I, I don't this think is what I'm thinking. This is why I just think. He's perfect for us. And then you've got, obviously, Erling's his big pal. He's at the ground running. He's going to be telling him about the Prem. And then we've got young Alvarez, who's lit up the World Cup as well. Phil Folder, you know, Jackie Grealish, you know, Calvin Phillips, Stones here. You know, I know Henderson and Trent basically were handcuffed to him for a week in in, in, in uh, Qatar. But our boys have got to be putting that... that people... Hey, Steve. Is. Steve, people have been saying, you know, Trent, right? Master assist, king of assists, or this will be any of his fucking footballing assists, yeah. mate. If he's assisted you to come to Liverpool, <laughs> so do all those amazing assists that he does on the pitch, mate. Well done, Sam. No, he's got it, mate. He's, he, he's, his stock has risen massively in the world. Yeah, Cup. he has. Like yeah. I say, he got he got the ball by the horns for me in that in that um, Wales game and just driven with it. And I think he, he set the tone for everyone else. And I think I've watched him twice this season with, with Dortmund. I was out in Dortmund the other week. Um, yeah. And they love him out there. They, they, they're saying the same to me when I was talking to Dortmund fans. They were mentioning Real Madrid and stuff. But listen, we had all this nonsense last year with Haaland about Real Madrid. They were getting Mbappe and Haaland and got none. So it is what it is. But no, Jude Bellingham, that's another saga. Can take a twist near the end of the season. Um, now, I'm just, look, I look, look, I've left it at. I've, I've, I've left that at, basically. I just, I just think... You know, I think we've done a lot of, lot of groundwork. Jurgen Klopp and FSG have been absolute, uh, what's the word? Um, careful, let's say, with their spending yeah. and everything else. Because I'm genuinely of the belief that this is the one they've wanted for a year and a half now. Um, Do and you look, think, though, if they get him, then there's not enough, they, they won't be any more money in the pot to strengthen elsewhere. Would you rather, nah. would you rather go for him and, and hope he, Sort of galvanizes it, or would you would you rather take two or three I'm, more players? Mate, I've been told we've got money to spend in the next yeah. two windows. Yeah, we've got money to spend in the two next next two windows. Um, and I and I know Klopp knows that as well. I think, and when I say money, I, I you know I've, I've been chatting to Liverpool, obviously on my channel, um, Liverpool people. I think we're going to spend close to close to two hundred million in the next yeah. two to three windows. Yeah, and Jude Bellingham's going to be one of them. I genuinely think we've made provisions for him. Um, we were going to get Schumann last season, but he chose Madrid over us. We couldn't do nothing about it. So the money is there. We were going to pay 60 million for him um, and Nunes. So the money's not a problem. We just we just got this weird thing about trying to get the player that we want because we can't afford to make mistakes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if we mess up, that's it. We're stuck with him. So yeah, look. You know, just I've just heard a few whispers that it's like his family, his dad's a proper, proper red. Like his dad yeah. deals with all his work and, and agency work and, and his personal thing. And he's a proper family man as well. Jude, he listens to his parents a lot. And, you know, someone I know very close to his family have said they 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 want Liverpool. They, they, they pretty much, as long as Liverpool can agree with Dortmund. And that's the biggest thing. You guys can come in and blow us out of the water. Yeah, we that, that's the only yeah. thing. Yeah, that's the thing. And so we don't. Apparently, you know, so we, Klopp's got a very good relationship with them. He's never gone back. He, I think he had a three-year pack with them. He couldn't go back for any Dortmund players. But obviously, that's passed now. So the chief executive of Dortmund has been saying, um, talking about Klopp and how brilliant relationship they've got as well. So, And Jude's been... Been given a few interviews on, like, not interviews, but talking about how he doesn't care about money and and all of this business, and you know he likes to, you know, that's why he chose Dortmund. Yeah. So I don't really mean why he's going to choose Liverpool, because, but 
do you get what I mean? The way he spoke about how he chose Dorman for a journey and he loves the atmosphere and the and how Dorman's not the biggest. So he, you know, he's kind of talking it from a, like a really level-headed kid. So look, we're gonna find out. It's gonna be a good. It's, it's gonna be a good good battle. It's gonna. I think it's gonna. I think they're gonna decide. I think the decision's gonna have to be made sooner rather than later. Uh, I don't think people are gonna have to wait too too long. I genuinely no. think. I think I generally think in the next four to six weeks we'll hear more. Um, I know reliable journalists from City, Mike Keegan thinks you guys are advanced. Yeah, I know a couple of reliable journalists that I've spoken to from the Liverpool side think Liverpool are favourites. So Jan Aga Fjortov, uh, he tweeted, "Don't discount Man City out of this deal." And Fjortov's around Dortmund all no, the time. No, no way. Of course not. Of course not. So, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you know, as I said. I, I genuinely believe that he's going to be Liverpool. You genuinely believe he's going to be City, and whoever gets him, mate, <laughs> lucky, lucky sods. Because you're right, he's actually grown on me, Steve. I'm going to confess here. I thought he's good. I thought yeah. he's very good, right? Exactly but I didn't. Same. But I didn't know. He was I was unsure. Good. Yeah. No, but he's I've got a lot. Of, he's got a lot of drive with him as well, and he, he's, he's he's got a little bit of Steven Gerrard about him. I think he's I think 19, he's Steve. Yeah, he's capable of dragging teams. Mad. mad and, and people lead by example. No, he's going to be hottest property about, man. And listen, we, we, we're privileged. We can say both teams are in the mix for him. So that one will go to the wire. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, mate, little match prediction. I, I, I really haven't got a clue about Thursday because I ain't got a clue about the team. I'm just going to say City get the job done, whether it's on penalties or, or whatever. Does this go to... Does this go to um... Extra think, time and penalties or straight to pens? I, no, no straight to pens. It's straight to pens, I think. Yeah. Straight to pens. Straight to pens. Straight so to pens. I'm, I'm I can sure. see that happening. I can see it being a cagey affair. I'm just thinking then Akanji might be back because Switzerland got knocked out early doors. So that Akanji might be back. Um, so I'm a bit more optimistic than I was. But I'm going for I'm going for I'm going for City to win it on pens. I was gonna say that. Fuck's yeah, sake. Ortega, oh. Ortega. I was going to say pens as well. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm sticking with it. I'm not going to change my mind. I think it's yeah. going to be two all. I think it's going to be two all after full time. Yeah. And then, because uh, that's our favourite sc scores, isn't it? That's one of the most common scores. I think it's two all. And I think you guys are going to beat us on pens. And we're going to just. Think? I'll take that, mate. Now I'll take that. Now I'll be happy and over the moon. Actually, listen, I'm going to change it. No, 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 no. We've got well, the, we've got the, we've got Keller in goal. Yeah. Two all. And we're going to beat you on pens. Keller, right. the Irish the lack, of the, the lack of the Irish, the lack of the Irish. Go on, Keller. Oh, God. Now, nah, listen, mate, it's a pleasure to have you on my channel. I don't do many these days. I am trying to improve. Um, I appreciate you giving up your time and coming on. Um, nice, where can man. they find you, Chris? Tell everybody where they can find you. Um, yeah, just look. If you want to hear more of my waffle, get over to Grizz Khan TV. Uh, I've actually changed the name. It's going to be called Football Carnage as an exclusive. I wasn't able to give you a Jude exclusive, but... Yeah, I've changed the name to Football Carnage. Um, so, yeah, Good. just type in Gris Khan TV and get over there. And, yeah, I'd like to think I'm a level-headed Liverpool fan. Uh, not one of these. I only sees it through one one rose-tinted classes. But, yeah, man, it's been a pleasure as always. You know always love chatting football with you, man. Always. No, I appreciate it, mate. And I've got Liverpool fans on me all day today. Mate, the man of messages yeah. that... I get for like, can you sort out Steve? Let's sort out Steve what? Liverpool <laughs> what? Do you want me to me, change mate? his love and passion for City? How the Red Men TV, Redman TV, AGT, <laughs> Coppish, um, they're all on me. They're all on me. But um, no, listen, this one uh, has been a great preview. Nice and laid back. Good talking to you as always. Yeah, man. Um, people, please like and subscribe and share the video. Um, get over to Grizzly's channel. Go and support him. He does some great shows over there. Always good to go on there. Good chatting and that. I know he's our big rival now, Liverpool. I know we've had some battles. You know, I know me and Grizz have had some great banter on the Big Six show, the Nearly Men, Heritage, all that nonsense. But <laughs> listen, he's like one of my brothers, man. And um, I appreciate you coming on, Grizz, yeah? Wicked, man. Nice one. Thanks very much. I'll speak Brilliant. to you after Thursday, mate, yeah? Hopefully. See you later, pal. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> See you later.